All right, DEFCON 32, we are here with Haipu. He's a part of Tool. Um, he's going to be talking to us a little bit about lock picking, and he's, we're going to be talking about a bunch of different things. Haipu, take it away, man. Tell us a little bit about what you got going on here at DEFCON. <laughs> you put me on the spot. I don't know anything about locks. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I know a couple of things about locks. I know these, I know these, uh, these Whoa. things. I wouldn't really call these locks. It doesn't. I mean, the mechanism is, I'd call it a mechanism, I wouldn't call it a lock, but yeah, um, you know, handcuffs are cool, I guess. Yeah, let's get a nice close-in shot here. So these yeah, look these like real deal, standard issue, are these law yeah. enforcement cuffs? These, they are, they're not standard issue, these are ASP sentries, um, it's something they come out with like last year, I think, early okay. last year. Um, ASPs are usually really expensive, and they're like 60, 65 bucks or something. Well, they dropped these. These are only like 35 bucks ish. And what kind I don't of metal this is we 20, made out of? 2013, 2014 prices. I mean, it's it's stainless steel, I think. Stainless steel. Um, okay. I'm not. I haven't done any, uh, you know, scratch, stretch and sniffs. Yeah. Um, I know this is hardened steel of some kind. Um, I'm not sure. If I think this is an alloy. But yeah, um, these are like a lower price handcuffs, which is kind of funny because the only reason you buy ASP is because you're loaded. But then they made <laughs> one that could be standard issue. But I, I don't know any departments that actually issue this. So you're locked up here, man. We've yeah. got you. You're locked up. You came in locked up. I didn't know yeah. you were gonna be here. So what, what's going on now? What, what are we gonna do? You're gonna. I'll just. I so mean, you're in the situation, yeah. man. You're here. You're. You're. Yeah. You're in so, a, a shitty situation. What are you gonna I mean, do? It's not, it's not that bad. It's I not that mind. bad. Okay. I don't know. All right. Yeah. So the best way to get out of handcuffs is to use the key. Okay. Um. And that's what I'm going to do here. Now, it's not cheating because if you use the key, um, you're out of the handcuffs. Right. Um, and a lot of people don't realize you can not only buy handcuffs, but you can buy handcuff, you can buy handcuff keys on like Amazon and eBay and stuff. So if you have a handcuff key and you get out of the handcuffs, um, that's fine. Now, we're also doing, over at the village, we're doing the dozer drill where you shim it. So you put a thin piece of metal down there and it will, you can back it out. Um, we teach at some of our other villages. We teach um, uh, the full the full mechanism because right now it's single locked so that you can shim it. But when you're actually put in handcuffs by somebody who knows what the hell they're doing, um, oh, can I swear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, of course, okay, yeah, good. fuck yeah. Okay, um, so yeah, the when they're double locked, which is what they would be if somebody who knew how handcuffs work put them put you in them, which is actually unlikely if you're getting handcuffed by some idiot. <laughs> it's not cops. Don't escape from the cops. Um, don't escape from the cops. Yeah, don't if escape you're, from if the you've cops. Been handcuffed by the cops. You've <laughs> by the way. Yeah. Right. We're, <laughs> yeah. We're not so condoning that. So you got to go through the keyhole. You got to pretend to be a key, or you can have a key. You know that is an option, but maybe you can could also pretend a, to be a key. So potentially, could you have like a tongue ring that is a a, a actual handcuff key? A, if you, you know someone like, who can make that, absolutely, yeah. Pull out but, what you're um, that that sounds like an expensive uh, machining operation to make a, that kind of a thing. Yeah, and uh, casting, I wouldn't put anything cast in my mouth probably. Okay. But, um, but yeah, the you can use a you can use a bobby pin. We teach at other conferences, small smaller conferences. Usually, we teach people how to use a bobby pin and get in there, pretend to be a key. Um, what's the what's the trick with that? I mean, are, I don't know if we're gonna do a demo right now on that or how long that I don't usually have a, takes. I usually have a bobby pin in my beard. I don't have it today. So. No bobby pin in the beard nah. today. But so how long <laughs> would it check. take? How long could you how long could you get out if, if you were if you had a, mean, a piece of a small piece of metal like it that? It it really wouldn't take that long. Um, Thirty seconds to a minute with some practice. What if um, I gave you a piece less. of metal to try to uh, something random? It has to be a pretty specific piece of metal. Okay. What about the thing off of that? Uh, the no, that's no, too, okay, it's that, too thick. Okay, yeah, right, off right, of right, the right, Chinese right. takeout container. So you need a specialized, yeah. somewhat it's of a specialized. It's not really specialized. It needs to be flat of, okay. and big enough. Like, what well, doesn't need to be flat? But it needs to. It needs to fit in there. Got See, it. It's that thing is just gonna be a little too small. Paper clips usually a little bit too big, or just like exactly the right size, which means it's too big. Got it. Um, so yeah, that's why we use bobby pins. Bobby pins have a lot of variety in how big they are, but almost always there's like a couple of brands that almost always they are small enough. It's almost as if they're made for it. I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe that was the idea. <laughs> like, man, we could uh, we could make all these things and sell them everywhere. Oh, but how will we convince other people to buy them that don't need to get out of handcuffs? Just Shit. you use them for your hair or your beard, yeah. right? Exactly. Well, tell yeah, me that's what product engineering. Exactly. You know, I, li I like. <laughs> you got to make I a like product that people utility. need to get the, pe the product that you want. Exactly, and multifunctional. Yeah, I'm multi talking about a multi-tool. <laughs> Absolutely. So, talk, yeah, I mean, talk you can use a, little... a bobby pin to like do other stuff. 
Talk to me a little more about what, you, what else you, um, what other types of locks are like, what say, I, I did see there was safe cracking going on. I don't know if that's part of yeah. uh, over there. I'm excited about that. We had uh, one of our volunteers stood up and, um, and said they would run a table. Um, that, that's, we're tool, this. by the way, I'm, I'm Haipu. I'm part of tool. We're a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, and we're like 100% volunteer run. We don't have any employees. We have like one contractor um, at, at the moment. So, I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe in six months, we'll, we'll, uh, Amazon will give us a billion dollars, but I don't, I don't think that's likely. I think I'm, they use locks and they don't like us. But, um, but you're pointing out the vulnerabilities anyway, so, yeah. and you're helping them improve product and security. So yeah, that, but right? people, don't, people don't always see it like that, especially when it's physical. Like software, yeah, you can patch software. Physical software or physical hardware is a little harder to patch when you're talking about like, oh, cool, we sold up this factory, now we can make millions and millions and millions of these things. It's like, ah, oh, but you can open it with this. Right. It's like, but, but, but it's going to cause like, Eight billion dollars to retool the factory, <laughs> and so new they don't want to do that. And yeah, all, like new factory uh, die cuts, etc. You know what was yeah. interesting after coming here last year, I learned the tiniest bit about lock picking, and then good. I was able to go home and pick my deadbolt, my house deadbolt within good. twenty minutes. You should get a better was, deadbolt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's I was like, oh wow, uh, yeah. this is not very secure. Or don't like who's picking your door. I, I was, but I hopefully no one else is doing that. Just the idea that it was that easy was yeah. a little, yeah, that, that made me but, think a lot more about my security. But that's that's kind of one of the funny things about about lock picking as as a, I don't know, as a crime. Like most of the time, um, you're actually committing more crimes, like more crimes per crime, um, by picking a lock and breaking into like a house or building or whatever, than if you use the masonry lock pick, which is what most criminals would tend to use. Wait, what is? What do you mean by that? Like, just your your tool of choice? Is no, the masonry lockpick is a brick. Oh, um, oh you throw it got through it. the window. <laughs> got it. Okay, I'm not even familiar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Versus. There's also the rotary lockpick, which is a drill. It's breaking and entering, but then breaking and entering, um, you didn't have any specific tools. There's no, um, there's no way to actively prove that there was uh, intention or conspiracy or anything when you show up with tools for picking the lock. A lot of states consider that to be premeditated right. just because of the fact that you had them. You have a little dime bag of weed, ah, it's premeditated, you're doing crimes, crimes on crimes. Do one crime at a time, always one crime at a time. One crime at a time. <laughs> if or don't, any crimes. Zero crimes like, at a time, know. how about that? Yeah. For everybody watching. But I think that's so interesting as far as, yeah, what, how law treats something like that. And I mean, again, going back to the idea, though, of pointing out the vulnerabilities, and it's like, how can I strengthen my own house? How can I buy a better deadbolt? And those are things that I was learning after just getting a, a bit of an idea of an understanding of lock picking after being here. I understand it, vu vulnerabilities at my own house and yeah. how I, it made me think a little more on how I want to. Yeah, and it's it's important to understand how it works if you if you care because if you're just gonna like if if I'm gonna go out and say this brand sucks, okay, don't buy that brand. Guess what that brand's gonna do? Spin off another brand, and it's the same thing. But they put it, they stamped a different logo into it. They changed what color it is. Ooh, it's the same shit inside. Yep. And so if yep. you understand how it works, you can be educated as a consumer in buying. You can be educated as a professional in suggesting, and you can be educated in testing if you want to like, oh, I bought this thing, but let me make sure it's good. And then you're sitting there with it not even in the door, with it not even like in air conditioning and stuff in your kitchen table, picking the lock. It's like, I've been here for half an hour. It's probably good lock. Right. I, let's shift gears a little to, towards tool and what you all are doing yeah. and how you're wanting to educate people and the main mission. Yeah, I do a lot of. Uh, I'm I'm very good at tangenting, so sorry. Yeah. No, you're great. Um, Tools a, a nonprofit. We're a 100% volunteer nonprofit right now. So everything that happens is is done by volunteers. Our board of directors is nonprofit. All of our chapters. We have local chapters all over the the country. I'm actually on the board of directors and I run um, the Northern Virginia chapter. And so everything happens because somebody did it. Every, most things happen because somebody wanted to do it, and then a couple things happen because uh, the, the alternative was really bad or something. Um, but yeah, like the content you were talking about, there's somebody running a table that's somebody just like, one of our volunteers just has like eight SNG 6700 dial locks on plastic stands with the back covered in acrylic instead of steel so you can see the insides. 
that's Very that's cool. the type of people we hang out with. Like Very just cool. they they just have cool shit, and then not only they have cool shit, but they spend like a not trivial amount of money yeah. to fly across the country to then volunteer their time and show other people how to manipulate a dialogue. That, that you know that, that I think that's one of the best things about being at DEF CON is people yeah. are just here just to, to help educate and share and uh, it's it's open source IRL yeah uh, and and I'm all about it man yeah it's awesome what else do you, I mean I think we you know we're wanting to probably wrap up here in a second but you know is there anything else you want to talk or tell people who are watching this about anything from your end on luck picking and and just in general uh, any philosophy or uh, I'm, I'm kind of rambling off here, but yeah, is there anything else you want to share? Um, consider consider getting in touch. We have a Discord, discord.gg slash tool. I think it's pretty cool. It's tool with three O's. We spell it wrong because we're cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, please consider getting in touch. Uh, start a group. Pick locks. If you're into this stuff, if you think you could be into it, get in touch. If you definitely are into it and have been holding back on us, what the hell, man? Um, <laughs> like, there are people, there are local people in your area that you don't know about that probably want to do it too. And all it takes is one, maybe two people to, to get things going. Um, I, I helped start my chapter. There was not much activity in the area. There was one meeting, which you know, most, most places don't even have that meeting. Um, uh, now the Washington, D.C. area has... Um, all five Wednesdays a month booked, so crazy. Yeah, like, and we have like a couple dozen people that that pretty consistently come and hang out, and and you can you can have that experience too. You can drink and pick locks with your buddies after work. It's Stay not, relentless. Yeah. Stay relentless, people. Work on your cool shit together. Get other yeah. people involved. IRL. Obviously, we can all talk to each other on all the boards yeah. out there and whatnot, but. Get, let's get together IRL, man. That's why we're here at DEF CON, right? Absolutely. Yep, yep. Yo, thank you very much for meeting me, Haipu. It's really awesome. Yeah. Appreciate you. Good awesome. To be here. Definitely. Cool. Thank you.